Certainly. Thank you for joining our session this afternoon. We are going to, we're joined here by um, individuals from our um, art, our uh, theater and music departments to explain a little bit more about um, studying the fine arts at Providence College. And um, we'll also have the chance to um, hear from um, different faculty members about um, not only the academic experience, but also the student life experience and um, the engagement between our students and the greater Providence um, area. Um, the city of Providence is known as the creative capital. Um, so we are, are certainly excited to have different people here today sharing um, about the student experiences and, um, and their, their time working with our different students on campus. I will be monitoring the chat function. So any questions that come about throughout this session, by all means, feel free to submit your chat, your questions through the chat. Um, my name is Diana Jingles. I'm one of our Associate Deans of Admission in the Admission Office. So I'll also be here to help answer some of those admission related questions. But first off, I'm going to turn it over to each of you. Um, if you'd like to introduce yourselves and, um, and then explain the department that you work with. And um, and the students that you advise in terms of um, the different concentrations within your departments. Should I start? Sure, go okay. for it. Hello everyone, I'm Paul Crenshaw. I'm a professor of art history at Providence College. I've been uh, at PC for 11 years now. And um, in the Department of Art and Art History, we have both studio art and the history of art. And uh, so we have uh, studio facilities in printmaking, painting, photography, drawing, um, uh, photography, did I say photography? Yes, sculpture, ceramics, visual design, both two-dimensional and three-dimensional, digital imaging, things like that. And in art history, we teach everything from cave painting and ancient archaeology to medieval art, to uh, what I do, Italian Renaissance and Baroque art, and uh, modern art and contemporary, and Asian art as well. And we have uh, two art galleries on campus that both um, focus on contemporary practicing artists. We bring in artists who are really uh, uh, making a name for themselves, a wonderful programming around those exhibitions that bring in uh, both scholars and uh, uh, students from various disciplines around campus. A lot of the exhibitions that we show are interdisciplinary in nature and appeal across disciplines. So we're not just talking to the other artists and art historians on campus. Um, and as you probably know, I hope you know, Providence, as, as uh, was just said, Providence is a great city for the visual arts. And, um, and so the RISD Museum is really our state museum on campus. It's not far away. We send students there all the time. Um, in fact, every student, staff member, and faculty member is um, uh, gets to go to the RISD Museum for free because we have an institutional uh, membership with them. So you can go anytime with and just show your PC ID. And uh, we sometimes organize trips there with our department. And sometimes the, um, the board of programmers, the, the student run, um, general college uh, uh, programming agency um, will send students over there on on trips. I don't know how that's going to go with COVID and everything, but uh, generally speaking, the RISD Museum um, is open once a month on Thursday evenings for a kind of college night, and so there are students there and all kinds of activities from all over all over town and the region, and so that's a fun thing to participate in. And our department also sponsors a field trip, again, COVID permitting. Uh, we sponsor a field trip where we, we load up a bus and go on a Saturday to uh, another place. And it's often to New York City. Sometimes uh, recently we went also to uh, Mass Mocha and things like that to, um, to uh, uh, visit a different museum, different town, see some art, hang out, have you know a meal, <laughs> do whatever you want to do for the day. And, um, and so we're a relatively small department, but we get along well. We teach students across disciplines, as you'll hear from everybody. Uh, I'm sure um, everyone at PC has to take at least one fine arts core course. And so there will be students in those introductory levels and, and uh, lower level courses uh, from all over campus, from the business school, from 
education from you know biology and and the sciences and all of the other humanities disciplines as well in addition to students who are majoring or minoring in the arts disciplines and so it's a real cross-section of campus in all of our courses but of course we also have advanced level courses for people who want to go further and and major or minor in our fields how's that I guess I'll go. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Erin Schmidt. I am an assistant professor of theater in the Department of Theater, Dance and Film at PC. So our department houses a theater major, which also has a concentration. Diana was mentioning, do we have concentrations? We also have a concentration in musical theater. So you can major in theater um, or major in theater with a concentration in musical theater. And then we also offer minors in both film and dance. Um, and I can talk a little bit about those in a second. But um, the theater major is a pretty comprehensive major in and of itself. Um, it has the course of study, has classes that involve literature, like history of theater, um, you know, more analytical courses like script analysis, and then of course performance courses as well. Um, and we too, you know, as Paul was just mentioning, um, the fine arts course, we have a tremendous amount of students from the PC community, especially from the business program that will take our introduction to acting course um, or our speech courses. Um, and so it provides an opportunity um, for our theater students to also meet and interact with other students from the community. And um, our performance courses are extremely comprehensive. We start out with, you know, beginning um, lower level courses, going all the way up to upper level courses. Uh, we take our students, we've gotten, several of us have gotten grants to take our students as well into New York City um, to see plays. Last year, we went and saw Hamlet at St. Anne's Warehouse um, right before COVID. So it was, we were lucky. We got in at the skin of our teeth, um, uh, February 24th, I think it was. So, um, and that's all paid for um, and part of your class through a grant um, that was applied for. So it's a real, our, our department, um, in terms of the major. It's a real comprehensive major. You will get courses in technical theater and design, um, survey courses that have to do with that. Um, and you can also really, we have a lot of students that we don't have a technical theater concentration, um, but that want to concentrate in that. So we have a couple of extra courses. We also have um, an opportunity for students to work on our productions. Um, and if you're a major, um, there's a certain amount of um, uh, uh, credits that you have to do um, on crew. So you will learn about set design, you'll learn about lighting design, costume design. So you'll get a really comprehensive um, overview and uh, when, when you're a theater major. The musical theater major or the concentration is a little bit more specific to musical theater. It allows for more dance courses some more music courses and that's a in in conjunction with and eric can maybe talk about that a little bit with the music department as well um so there's some courses that are offered in music but they're cross-listed with us as well like opera workshop and some other courses so um there is a musical theater uh concentration which has become really popular um with our students over the last few years um and then of course our productions, right? And students who are not majors um, can actually be in our productions because Providence College is a liberal arts institution. And because our, our major is a BA and not a BFA, we invite students from across campus. And many times in our productions, we have finance majors who might be the lead in a show. Um, and they might be a theater minor, or they may not even be a major or minor, which is really exciting. It's an opportunity for students from around campus to get involved in the arts that maybe aren't committed to majoring in the arts, which I think is, is of real value here um, at PC. And the types of programming, we normally do uh, three main stage shows um, and then one student production. 
Um, our seniors who are majors have to do a capstone project, which usually is, is a production of some kind. It might also be a play that they've written, but it usually ends up being a production. And that may end up being part of our season. Um, sometimes if we have multiple capstones, obviously only one of them can be part of the season, but it gets money from the budget, a set will be built and designed for it. So it's really exciting for our students um, to have something maybe that they've written or something that they are, have directed um, be a part of our season. And our programming is everything from expressionist, experimental things um, to big budget musicals. Um, so it really, are our, our, our um, offering is one that you could find and learn from new and different things all the time. Um, and, and then just a little bit about the, the film minor um, and the dance minor. So those, again, are minors that we offer. Um, Father Ken Gumbert, who runs the film program here, has a wonderful program that is called PC in Hollywood that is incredibly enticing to our students. He always gets many, many students more apply than, can, um, than he can take with them. But you go to Los Angeles for a week in January before um, the spring semester begins and you meet with all kinds of producers in film, directors in film. Um, I know he, he generally meets with the Fairley brothers um, who are graduates of Providence College who have won Oscars um, before and you go to agencies and there's a tour of Paramount and it's a wonderful opportunity for our film students but it's it actually is opened up to anyone at PC. So we have business students who go on that trip as well. Um, it's, it's a really wonderful thing. Um, and then our, and the film program offers, the, the minor offers a lot of different survey courses in film. We have a new um, course that was just approved that's gonna start in the spring that is Black Cinema. Um, that's a wonderful course that is being taught by a new history professor um, that just came to Providence College. So that's exciting. And then our dance program, um, which is led by our chair, Dr. Wendy Oliver, it is based in modern dance, although, um, and we have a dance company that is based in modern dance, although we offer tap and jazz, um, ballet, and all different kinds of levels. So that too is very comprehensive. Um, and we bring in, our department brings in a bunch of guest artists every year. Those are people from the Providence community and from all around the country. Last year in a production that I work, worked on, I brought in people from New York um, to design our lights and, and to design our sound from Chicago. So we're always bringing in artists who are um, working professionally on their craft, and that's true in dance, film, and theater as well. I think it's my turn. Go for it, Eric. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Melli, and I am an assistant professor in the music department here at PC. And uh, it's really nice to be speaking with you today. Um, at PC, we have really every kind of ensemble you would, you would find um, in any collegiate music program. We've got uh, jazz ensembles and an orchestra a couple of choirs, we have a symphonic uh, wind ensemble, a concert band, uh, we have chamber music, um, we have a full-time staff uh, pianist, so for any of your solo work, a really wonderful musician, maybe the best musician on the faculty is our full-time staff accompanist because he's, he's really a collaborator with you and you get to develop your own voice. Um, every music student at PC takes private lessons, so they take a one-hour lesson uh, once a week. And so that's one-on-one -on -one time direct with a professional teacher and all of our teachers, this is one of the things that really sets us, I think, apart. All of our teachers are professional working musicians. So my main instrument is trumpet. And when things were normal, I would be playing, you know, once or twice a week with orchestras or jazz ensembles uh, out in uh, Providence and in, in New England, all of New England. And every one of our faculty members really does the same thing. Some of them are the best musicians, in, especially in Southern New England, and they play in pit orchestras and they sing and, and, and it's really a wonderful community so that you're getting not just great pedagogy, but you're also getting a lot of professional, um, professional expertise behind 
the pedagogy. Um, so we offer a couple of different concentrations. There's a music major, which is um, kind of a pure liberal arts uh, concentration in music. You study music history and you learn about the structures of music, music theory. We also um, offer a music education program, which is really outstanding. And you're certified in both vocal music and uh, instrumental music. And you're uh, able to teach in any classroom K through 12. And we have a 100% placement rate of all of our music ed, ed graduates. Um, and um, let's see, those, those students study not only the standard music curriculum, music theory, music history, and performance, but they also study pedagogy courses. Um, and that uh, has one foot in the School of Professional Studies at PC. We've just developed a really exciting program uh, called Music Technology and Production. And we have a wonderful new faculty member who's got his doctorate in uh, basically computer music and recording techniques and also live sound amplification. So um, he's a terrific new asset to our program and we're developing courses on the way to a major uh, in music technology and production. So if you're a performing musician in your rock band or you're a violinist and you want to uh, record your string quartet, these are all skills that we're gonna be able to add to your skill set. Uh, with with his expertise and we're also building a really wonderful music technology studio on campus and that's that's growing seems like every week we get some new funding or some new new technology in the building uh, so I think that's I think that's about it we do some uh, tours it's been I'm in my third year here at PC we haven't toured in the three years but very recently we've toured of course to New York City there have been a couple of European tours over the last several years. Um, and we certainly want to get that going as soon as we can uh, once things get back to normal. I think awesome. that's Awesome. And so you've, you've all talked about um, certainly um, part of the, the core curriculum at Providence and students are required to um, take advantage of a fine arts course during their time at Providence. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, um, I guess, the, the typical um, student who um, majors in one of your departments and the interplay between the curriculum that they're taking as a fine arts major and the, the greater core curriculum? And, um, and then to how um, you've seen some students who may add a second major or a minor um, to the arts department. Maybe they came in as, say, that business major or a biology major, and how have they incorporated some of the different courses within your different departments? I can, I can speak on that a little bit. Um, I would say, first and foremost, the students who, I think the real benefit of a liberal arts education, and I'm speaking as someone who, you know, has been a professional actor for 20 years um, as well, is the idea that you are getting that well-rounded education at Providence College. And it all begins with Civ. That is the foundation of who we are. And it, it permeates throughout all of the disciplines that we're talking about here and every discipline at Providence College. Um, and so the idea that you can major in theater, but go out and become whatever it is that you want to be, whether it's directly related to theater or not, um, is the wonderful thing about the foundation of the humanities and the arts are such an important part of the humanities. They are at, we are at the forefront of what is happening in the world every day, that idea of art imitating life. Um, it starts here. And so, um, and you know, Father Shanley, who, who just left us, that used to be something that he talked about all the time and the, the importance of the humanities. So I would say that foundationally, um, all of our majors and all of our courses of study um, are going to lead you to whatever you want to do in, in the world after you leave here. You're just getting that well-rounded understanding of the human condition when you're in any of our disciplines. Um, speaking of students maybe who, I we probably have one or two students a year 
in our department that will start off as another major, take our introduction to acting course and then change to a theater major or tack on a minor um, or, you know, have a double major. We have a, in the theater department, we have several students who are double majors in theater and history, theater and English. Um, and so it, it, we had a student last year that was theater and finance. It's obviously harder when you're a double major, but it, they work together so well um, that I don't think that that's a problem. And, um, and we also have had students declare that a little bit later on in their college careers. So it's not impossible. If it's something that's really important to you, um, you can do it. I'll just add on to what Aaron said that, um, you know, we don't get a lot of people coming in declared as art and art history majors. I'm sure the same is true in theater and music. And, um, but we we recruit them or they take an intro class and they fall in love and they have to have it in in their lives and um you know but some people come in with a, a preconception that oh it's something that i like to do but not something that i want to study or it's something that i enjoy but not something that um that i can make a career out of but in fact it is it's something you can study intensely deeply and and you know, for a very long time. And it's something that you can make a career out of. And, you know, not all of our students will go on in the art world or arts worlds, but, um, but they are prepared to go on in, in life and thrive. And because I think I can speak for all of us, we're relatively small departments on campus. It's not like psychology or biology or English where, you know, there are tons and tons of students. So you get a lot of close personal attention and your personal growth curve in our departments, I think is very strong. You know, by the time that our students graduate in, in art or art history, they're very comfortable speaking about the world that we live in. And, you know, because we live in a, a, a audio visual world <laughs> that, um, you know, inundates you with advertising, with, with um, things that are trying to convince you in one way or another of, a truth or a an idea or a product and you know our students tend to be very cognizant of how that works in society today and to be able to manipulate such things themselves rather than being manipulated by advertising and political argumentation and things like that and so um, our students are well prepared to go on even if it's in advertising or law or you know, whatever the case may be, or in business, because they are comfortable as citizens in our society. And, you know, for example, um, a couple of years ago, the, um, the PC Gallery's websites were redesigned, and our gallery director got a team from, from Google to, um, to do the new redesign of our gallery's website. And she brought them here. Uh, these, are, these are Google people who do Google branding. And she brought a team of them here to do a sort of career night. And of course, all the business <laughs> students were all over it. And we had well over 100 people attend this event. And the message, though, that came from the Google team was, we don't care what you major in. We'll train you what we need to train you in. But we are interested in, in interesting people, right? They want creative thinking and uh, you know, people who are curious and fascinated about the world and who want to make a contribution, who want to make a change to the world that we live in. And, and because we're small departments, you know, our students come out with, with a great recommendations from us because we know them very well. Uh, that's great for graduate programs or for job applications. Um, they are uh, getting internships all the way along, whether it's things on campus working during the school year or uh, things in the local community or, or back home, wherever you live. And they're also then eventually competing for national and even international internships and jobs. So, you know, the, the career paths in our departments, I think, are very strong, actually, contrary to some you know, reputations that might be out there. Our students do very, very well for themselves once they leave Providence College. Yeah, uh, can I just add to that and say, um, I think the core of the liberal arts program here at PC is the development of uh, Western Civ course. And, um, you know, I've kind of always said that 
the study of the arts is the study of Western civilization. Um, it parallels so closely. And, you know, if, if anywhere you look uh, in, in our society today, there's the arts are manifest. And I'll, I speak from a music perspective, but if you watch a July 4th celebration, if you watch a political rally, if, you, if you're looking at a commercial, all of that is very, um, very uh, carefully curated in an artistic fashion and packaged. And uh, you know, so our students will, um, as they get through toward the end of their, uh, their curriculum here in their senior year, either the fall or the spring semester, they, provide a they present a recital. And so they are the star and the director and the producer, the executive producer of that performance. So they decide what they play in collaboration with their teacher and then they present it and they're the MC. So they address the audience. And so these are all real life skills that, uh, you know, not every course of study really trains you for public speaking. And so the arts are, are integral to that. And I will just add, you know, the late John Lewis who just passed away, um, uh, I'm paraphrasing him, but one of the things he said is if it weren't for music, the civil rights movement would have been a lot harder. He credits music, the music of the civil rights era. These are African-American artists and people who were attracted to that art from African-American artists. That helped pave the way for more equality. So the arts are integral to our society. And that's, that's true for all of the arts. I'm obviously a musician, so I'm biased. <laughs> but it's true for all of the arts here. So it's extraordinarily valuable. Fantastic. And, um, and certainly, too, I, I'd love for you each to describe some of the different facilities that our students have access to. Um, and, uh, for instance, the different galleries, um, music practice rooms, and, and concert halls, and theater as well. Um, it, as we transition to that, we, we did have a question specifically for Aaron, um, just asking about uh, if Providence is in any way limited in the number of different productions and the types of different productions we're able to offer because we are a Catholic institution. Um, and then following up with that, um, was wondering um, a little bit about the Kennedy Senator American College Theater Festival as well. Um, we had that question from, from a student. Sure. I'll talk about the KCACTF first. Yes, we participate in KCACTF. Um, we don't participate every single year um, because it is incredibly time consuming. And um, but we do participate. Um, we were just there this past year with several students, a couple of which went on um, to the next couple of rounds in Irene Ryan competition. So um, yes, we participate. It is it's a, a wonderful program. Um, and more importantly, the workshops that the students can attend while they're there, aside from the competition and the productions that they get to see from other colleges around our region. Um, is really just invaluable. We have had several students over the years that have gone to Washington to compete. So they've won um, in our division um, and then moved on to the Kennedy Center to compete. And we've had that in dramaturgy. We've also had that in Irene Ryan. So yes, um, that's, that's a yes, but it's not every single year. Um, and the other question was about Catholicism and the and and theater. We get that question a lot, actually. So um, I understand it. Um, and I would say no, meaning that it informs what we do, but it doesn't really limit what we do. Um, we choose pieces because we think that they're important for our audiences to see, for our students to perform, and more importantly, for the college as a whole to talk about and discuss and ruminate on. Um, I'll give you an example. Last year, we, I directed a production of Jean Genet's The Maids, um, and no one will tell you that that is something that is not controversial. Um, it pushed a lot of boundaries. Um, but we felt like it was an important piece of theater for now about women, 
um, about how women are portrayed on stage. And so we take our role of theater and moving the narrative forward at Providence College very seriously. And so it does not limit us in any way in terms of the material. You know, people are always like, can we say that curse word? Can we, do we have to cut this out? But for us, it really isn't about that. We're not looking in that way. We are looking to stay on the forefront and to push boundaries um, in ways that are, are going to inform our community and not necessarily to do it in a way to be provocative, just to be provocative. We wanna be provocative because it's going to help someone to understand someone better or to push some sort of narrative forward. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really important to us that we're, we're not doing arsenic and old lace every year. It's really important to us. So we, we, we take that job of season selection very seriously. And I'll just talk about our facility real quick and then I'll, I'll let Paul and Eric talk, but we have two different theaters. Um, we have um, the Angel Blackfriars Theater, which is about a 300 seat, um, beautiful thrust stage um, that can go as a proscenium, but we use it mainly as a thrust that has a full fly system, wonderful updated LED lights and an updated sound system. Um, so it's a really, really wonderful, beautiful, intimate space in a way, but um, it, it, it's modeled after um, the Guthrie and um, a theater in Lincoln Center as well. So um, it's, it's a beautiful space. Um, and then we have a black box theater that we use for all of our performance classes. Um, it's called the Boab Studio Theater, and that's a wonderful space as well. And it's right next to one of um, the art galleries. So it's nice because people who come to see shows, the art gallery, one of the art galleries is in the lobby of Smith. So that's a nice place for people to go to before shows as well. Well, since, um, since Aaron just mentioned the Riley Gallery and the Smith Center for the Arts, uh, that's one of our two art galleries on campus. Um, I'll echo Aaron's remarks that we do not feel the need to censor ourselves um, in the content of the exhibitions that we, that we do in those galleries, nor in the subject matter or, or nature of the work that our students produce. You know, we want them to, to think it through, to be critical, but if that criticism is about the world that we live in, and you can communicate it visually and through your own creativity, that's what we're looking for. And that's what we're pushing and promoting. And, you know, uh, Catholicism isn't easy. <laughs> it does, you know, it, it's, it's something that should be struggled with if, if you choose to embrace it. Um, so there's no such thing to my mind as, you know, um, uh, taking it easy because you're at a Catholic school. You know, it, it, if you want to pursue something Catholic related, that has demands of its own. If you don't want to, you're free to go in other directions as well. And so it doesn't define really what we do programmatically or in terms of our curriculum or our pedagogy. You know, the history of art is fraught with, um, with, with, uh, uh, it's full of, of, um, uh, religious art, but that's not always clean either. And the nature of religion has changed over the over the centuries. And so the nature of the art has changed along with it. And so what seems uh, normal today might have been quite controversial in the past and vice versa. And there are mm -hmm. so many things, you know, about Christian art in earlier eras that would really uh, raise your eyebrows at least uh, today. And so, um, you know, we talk about all of these things and they're part of what our students do. And I just want to echo something also that Eric mentioned a, a few moments ago about the, the sort of capstone experience in our department. Um, our students uh, in studio art, uh, as seniors, they have an exhibition of their own. And while our two galleries are dedicated to, to working contemporary artists for most of the year, at the end of each year, we show work by our seniors. And you know, even if students go to an art school where they would be taking a lot more courses and focusing exclusively on visual art, but, um, but they would have a senior capstone experience that's usually one or two works in a group show. 
And what we are doing is giving our students an entire exhibition of their own. So they have to produce not just one or two works of, of a high quality, but a whole exhibition's worth of material that is cohesive and coherent and that they also have to present and promote and defend to the faculty and, and to anyone else who wants to attend. And so um, it's a really well-rounded and challenging experience. But by the time that they're seniors, they're, they're on top of it. They're ready to do that. And they're well prepared for that. And on the art history side, we produce a journal at the end of the year that um, all of our students do a senior thesis that is an original bit of art history. And uh, again, it's a daunting exercise. We mimic the publication of a professional journal. We send it out for peer review from a professional scholar outside of the college. And you know, so they get feedback on it and things like that. And so again, it's, it's challenging, it's daunting, it's a tough exercise by the time you're a senior, but by that time you're trained for that and you're, you're ready to do that because you've worked your way through it. And uh, you know, so we, we produce students who are ready to work at the highest level that an undergraduate college can work in these fields. And they're ready to go on to top graduate programs if that's what they want to do, or to enter into the, the job market uh, as well. And I, um, I know Eric wants to say some things, but um, I just want to say one other thing about, um, well, I, I'll come back to it later. I have one other thing to say about uh, business and communication. Remind me if I forget later. Uh, so I'll start with facilities. We have um, our main performance venue is the Ryan Concert Hall. And it's just, it's just lovely. It's, it is a, a, a beautiful um, recital hall. So all, all recitals are performed there for students who choose to. Um, the acoustics are very, very fine for vocalists and solo instruments. Um, it seats about, I think, 250 people which um, which is nice. It's very intimate. Um, and there's a choir loft behind the stage. So collaborative works are possible. Um, you can just Google Ryan Concert Hall at the Smith Center. It's really a beautiful space. So we're lucky to have that. Um, I, I just love walking into work every day because, you know, I walk by the costume shop and from the parking lot. And then I walk by the practice rooms where musicians are warming up or practicing piano or whatever their instrument is. We have, I think there are eight practice rooms that can be used um, throughout the day and uh, music majors can, can access those whenever they want. Um, and I don't think there's, we don't have a sign out system. You can just kind of walk in when you have a break. Um, and then um, we've got a, a couple of rehearsal facilities that are really, really nice. Uh, there's one main rehearsal facility right off the stage which is large and that's where you know the the concert band and the choirs all rehearse um and all the equipment is stored things like that we also have the the smith center itself was designed uh to the the entrance to the smith center is designed to be a stage and we actually did a concert last fall outside in front of the smith center and there's a big green lawn that's raked in front of the smith center uh, for the audience to sit. And especially in these times of uh, COVID, I think we actually might be taking advantage of that a little bit more as, as we go through some outdoor performances. So, and then there are a few others, like um, if uh, for those of you who might be jazz or rock or commercial musicians, we actually have an Irish pub on campus and the jazz band and jazz groups, the funk band, we usually play one or two or more concerts there to kind of give a more authentic non-concert hall experience for jazz and rock. Eric, can, can students um, uh, reserve rooms in the, in the music studios to come and practice on their own even when they're not enrolled in courses? Yes, so that's something it, to, be, to be candid, we're actually trying to figure out um, hygiene mitigation with the COVID because it's a small room. We're working on it, um, but yes, when normal times they're open and they can just, they can just go in. Um, and there's a piano in every room and a music stand in every room. Um, I'll just add one or two things about facilities in, in the visual arts. We, um, you know, the college has been very responsive to, uh, to, you know, building the Smith Center a decade or so ago it was a great uh, development for the college. 
um, really put a stamp uh, on the the visual art on the arts uh, at PC. Um, we've also been doing more and more with the visual arts here and there. So there is a, a, a former chapel that we redesigned a couple of years ago to serve as the um, classroom for our introduction to the survey of art history. It has about 100 seats tiered and a big screen and a super high quality projector. So it's a great place to just sit and be overwhelmed by images. And we, you know, we put four faculty members on that intro course because it's so important to us and about 15% of all Providence College students take that course. And so it reaches a really broad audience. Um, our studio facilities, I mentioned at the beginning, you know, we, we teach in painting and drawing and um, uh, the, the, all the traditional media of, of the fine arts, but also we have computer labs of our own and uh, we have new design thinking courses. And the, the tough thing about that is you, you need a, you need computer lab, but you also need a workspace and you know in a workspace you need to get dirty and dusty and the computers don't like that so it's hard to combine those two kinds of spaces but we've done it you know we've we've reconfigured spaces to do the the new pedagogy that we want to do and the new courses that students are asking for and demanding in the world that we live in and um and on that front there will be a new communication minor that will start up a year from from this coming and uh, it will have strong components in, um, in visual and uh, writing and in performing and media. And so there will, be, there will be new courses that would be dedicated to that minor and it will incorporate um, you know, some aspects of the other majors in the arts. And what a lot of people in the business school are, are doing is going into business thinking that they are going to do something in communication or media or advertising. And that's not really what the business school focuses on and specializes in. And so we're trying to fill a gap and fill it not through the business school, but through arts and sciences, because a lot of those students who want to do advertising or media really should be in the fine arts or should be in music, theater, dance and film, you know, and uh, and so it, it, it's, it's, it's not, again, the first thing that they think about because they think, oh, I, I want to go into the business school, but we're really trying to redirect them and give them access. And what I'm hoping is that that new communication minor will be a, a not only a career building block for people in our majors, but also a, a, a funnel for people out of the business school who, who really can recognize that, oh, what they want to do is studio art or what they want to do is music or, you know, performance. And so, um, you know, those are, those are pathways to those careers in new media and, uh, and the creative industries, the entrepreneurial industries are, are, you know, based in what we do all the time, not what the business school does all the time. Oh, that's great. And I mean, certainly, um, Almost along those lines as well, um, we often get questions from students about um, their their applications to um, Providence, but more specifically, um, if they have decided and declared a, a fine arts major, and um, and what your departments may be looking for within an audition or a portfolio that's submitted. Um, would you like to give a brief rundown of um, typical? things that you love to see within that particular audition or um, or that portfolio that a student might consider submitting when they submit that application to Providence and have declared a particular fine arts major sure I can I can start um, typically uh, we invite live auditions on campus that's probably going to be altered this year and so for students who are you know, last we had music major come in from Chicago last last um, um, last academic year, and he submitted videos because he did come for a campus visit. But you know, it's obviously it's financially difficult to get back and forth uh, from Chicago, so he submitted videos, and I think we're going to encourage that again this year. For your uh, applications, what we're looking for is two contrasting selections. So that means contrasting in terms of if you're a classical flutist, for instance, you would you have maybe something Baroque and then something a little bit later, maybe romantic or even contemporary or classical uh, from those different genres. And if you have any questions about that, 
just reach out and we can help you. Um, and usually something expressive and something technical, something that's going to show off all the, the wide range that you have a, as a musician. Um, if you're a vocalist, we would want something maybe in, in, could be one selection in English, and then we would look for something in a different language, but that's not necessary. Maybe something that's more classically based and something maybe from um, a musical or an opera uh, would be appropriate. If, you do a, if we do live person auditions, we usually ask the auditioner to sight read as well. That just gives us a gauge of music literacy. Um, obviously, sight reading on a video doesn't really help us very much. Um, so uh, that, that's basically it. And um, if you have any questions, please, it's on our website now, just contact. We have a wonderful ad admin who knows the ropes and uh, she can direct you to the faculty member or answer your question directly. Um, I'll, I'll go. Uh, yeah, ours is it's similar to what Eric said. We're always looking for two contrasting pieces. Um, and so in theater, that might be something comedic versus something dramatic. Um, it might be uh, something classical versus something contemporary. You can, we can really see contrast in a lot of different ways in the theater. Um, so that's in terms of the content, that's what we're looking for. I always tell people who are auditioning, you know, um, don't try to do something new that you just picked like a week ago. I would love to just see you do something that you know you do really, really well. Um, because it's really important that we see you um, in up there um, and that, you know, we're not, you're not trying to be someone else um, because you're going to shine through and that's going to let us know who you are because it's just as important to us. Talent obviously is important, but really just as and probably more important is the kind of person that you are um, and the kind of interest that you have in the arts and uh, just, you know, your work ethic. All of those things are the things that I look for even more so a lot of times um, than talent. And maybe, you know, we, we often ask our students questions afterwards, uh, you know, about the pieces that they chose and things like that. So really knowing why you're doing something and why you chose it and why it was important to you um, is the kind of information that we're looking for. We also do in-person auditions, but we have been working with admissions, and I know, Diana, you're probably on this, to do a lot more video submissions. Um, and we have been working in, with, with a group in California that they've been submitting a lot of video auditions um, with the admission staff that's working over there. So we've been going from the West Coast, the East Coast with the videos, and that's probably more recently the way in which we've been um, getting our students, so. Uh, Diana, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's still the case that students can submit um, images of their uh, studio artwork through the common app when they apply to Providence College. I think there's a limit on the number of images and the, the, qual the you know, uh, the size of the files. But um, again, as, as Aaron was saying, we're looking for quality more than quantity, you know, and uh, we've had students who will, uh, you know, on top of what they submit in the application, send us a huge file of images, you know, through email. And that's fine. You know, we, we'll take a look at it. But um, but we're really interested in, in quality work. And, and we think it's enough to submit through the through the portal. But we're happy to answer any questions and communicate um, with with uh, potential applicants all the time. We, we do it. Um, you know, we we meet with them when they come to campus, if, if that's possible. Um, but we also, you know, uh, correspond over email all the time too. And um, the, uh, uh, you know, this is one area where I think the arts differ from almost every other discipline because the departments are directly involved in this one component of the application process. And, um, you know, normally with most students, they are applying to college and it's, that the uh, application is only seen by people in the admissions department and um, admissions office. And this is one thing where, you know, they reach out to us or we 
we have uh, input and it comes directly from the faculty. So it's not the admissions people deciding, oh, I like this painting or, or uh, you know, this sounds great, this musical piece that they submitted. Um, it's, it's coming from the faculty. And so it's getting a really professional evaluation. And, um, and we like that. We like to see it. We like to hear it. We like to watch it. And, um, and uh, it helps your application, I think, you know. It, get, it, it helps us also, as Aaron was saying, to get to know who you are and what you like to do and what you're interested in, you know? So we're not judging you, you know, whether it's not quite like a foreign language, you know, where you can say, oh, I'm, I'm at third semester, the equivalent of third semester French, right? It's, it's not like that for us in, in, art, in art history, at least. We're not gonna say, oh yeah, we're gonna place you into second level of painting class. Um, we're, we're thinking about who does this say who you are as a person and what, you know, what proficiency do you have? Yes, but what is your interest in this subject matter? Or, um, you know, what does it show about your experience and your dedication to this sort of a thing? And th that's the kind of feedback that we're going to give to the admissions department and it's going to play some factor in whether or not you get accepted to PC. And, you know, then once you get here, you know, we can figure out what the what courses are right for you and things like that. That that's not our main concern in the application process. And there was a, a clarifying question for Aaron. Um, just if an audition was required for acceptance into the theater major, or um, was the audition just to determine scholarship? The audition is just to determine scholarship. So yes, because the theater major is not a dedicated performance major, meaning you could be there just to be taking the literature courses and the analyzation courses, and maybe you're a stage manager and you wanna be a stage manager. So no, the audition is just, if you're looking to get scholarship, it allows us, if you are interested in, in the acting, we like to call it an acting track, but it's not really a track. But if you are interested in acting or you are interested in musical theater, it does help us to know who you are a little bit more, um, but it is not at all required to be, you can, anybody can become a theater major, yes. And I would and, just, oh, can I just clarify something? It is required as a music major. Um, so what we would say is, it, what we have done, even had people come in undeclared, be accepted to the college undeclared, and then they actually auditioned for the music major in like the first week of the semester. And so we can do it like, the, we can do it that way. Sometimes we, um, it happens later on, like I believe Paul was saying, we, they kind of take some of our music courses and then they say, well, why am I studying whatever when they really want to study music? Um, and that happens the other way too. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> I'm yeah. sure. But, um, but uh, yes, it is required to be officially a music major. You do need to audition. And that also helps with, with scholarship uh, allocation as well. Fantastic. And just to circle back to the points that um, you all made, certainly about um, getting to know students throughout their portfolio submissions, the, the different um, pieces that they choose, the images that um, they've created and, and submit. Um, I think too, you know, when when we as a as a whole admission process, as a whole college, are are looking to build a class of incoming freshmen, um, certainly those holistic pieces are always coming into our vision and, and really um, under our consideration because uh, for each of our incoming freshman students they are part of a larger freshman class and for each of your departments um, their own department family and I know that many of you are our mentors and resources for a lot of our students so thank you again for joining us this afternoon and for sharing these ideas and perspectives with um, some of our seniors, our rising seniors in high school who are considering Providence. So thank you again. Good luck guys. Good luck yes, with everything. good luck everyone. If there are any questions, just email. Email's the best. <laughs> yeah. And feel free um, if you'd like, if you're already in contact with the admission office, we can message, uh, we can pass your message on to any of the faculty who've joined us here today. So thank you again. You're welcome. Thank Take you. Take care. Stay safe, everybody.
Thank you, Diana. Thank you.